So, welcome to VIT Chennai. Uh, today we are going to start the first session of design thinking, and we'll be coming across design thinking origin and also its history and evaluation. So, myself, Dr. Kajanathan Reddy, Professor, School of Mechanical Building Engineering, working on VIT Chennai. So how this design thing is originated? It is originated because of there is a lack of creativity and on extreme cases we are not able to produce or create new products and services which are able to satisfy the customer needs. And also the 20th century education system which is inculcated into the students who have become as now as uh, important people in uh, industry having analytical thinking rather than creative thinking. So that particular thing made uh, the people to grow up with an overpowered mindset and skill set of what is available with us, how do we manage it, how do we maintain or sustain the value. Okay, so whenever you would like to have some change externally, then you are required to make out innovation. So how do you make this innovation to happen? If you want to do innovation, your organization needs to have capacity to design. So what is the, how do we make this uh, design capacity to come out? It needs to have a good culture which encourages to have people with creative thinking capabilities and also make the people to use the design methodologies and tools which are available. So this creative thinking complemented with the design methodologies and tools will definitely get fused together internally within the organization to create a culture that fosters the organization to be an innovative organization. So here, the same thing what we discussed, I'm trying to put it in a symbolic way, where the design capacity includes critical thinking and the design tools. And together, this particular capacity which has been built will definitely make the firm to be innovative firm. And this innovative firm will try to provide the creative solutions to make the external change to appear and in turn the customer will get delighted. So everywhere we could definitely could find out that a design is the differentiator to respond to changing trends and customer uh, uh, requirements and behavior. So whenever you are able to make your design to be good and appealing that automatically makes you get competitive advantage and impacts the bottom line and also that drives the business growth. These businesses are realizing that yes, design is very, very important to consider it as a value creation capability. So this value creation, it comes from designers' creative thinking and use of tools and uh, methods to produce the new values. So whenever you are able to give a problem to the designer and if it is having a lot of Machineness in the beginning and also ambiguity is high, then only it is found that the better values will come out at the end of the process. So, whenever the designer's creative process and mindset are too ambiguous and messy and unpredictable for business to follow and embed as a part of their organizing process. So, in a place of designer, there has become like a process which can make the people to get aligned with that particular process. So design thinking has been transformed into a part process and this is something which we could say that creative problem solving approach where designers used to create new values that are different and create positive impact. So design thinking is an approach to innovate. You could see here the culture. MIT is known University, they have done a good study on uh, how do we rate companies or uh, products or like you know, brands uh, based on their culture. So they identified there are totally nine values among them agility, collaboration, customer, diversity, execution, innovation, integrity, performance, and respect. So these are the nine parameters which have been considered and they are able to measure it across every organization to find out where they are standing in making this value to be improved. 
Similarly, by having this comparison across all these nine measures, they have done a survey on a different organization which are uh, uh, competing in uh, overall world market and able to put it across in a single uh, chart how they have been positioned. So let us just have a look at it. Agility means what? Flexibility. Collaboration means teamwork. How you are able to make and how you make uh, every employee to feel about this is our company. Customer need to be focused on customers' requirement, deliver for clients and customer driven and diversity. Inclusion, everyone is welcome. Celebrate differences. No need to be, he's different, I'm different. Try to make it like a different background people to be together, to involve, to participate in making all the creative solutions. Execution, operational excellence, the projects to manage well and taking the ownership. Innovation, cutting edge technologies, leading change, advanced technologies, and integrity, do the right thing, be ethical, play by the rules. And then performance, meritocratic, have a clear cut ladder to say that how the performance is being rated against each and every employee of your organization. Recognize achievement, results driven, and then respect, treat with the dignity, courtesy, appreciation for each other. So this is a way how the nine values which have been considered to study the culture within the organization and to show that where they need to improve, where they need to uh, make uh, uh, substantial uh, improvement in their particular work. You could see here, this is the one uh, study what is done by the same MIT store, where Amazon uh, organization brand, uh, where uh, they predicted about the nine values. Here the chart shows about uh, frequency, how frequently they are able to think about this particular uh, uh, the values. Amazon is having a very good innovation. It has got a good point for innovation and also good point for customer focus. And they are having good platform to make a diversity to be addressed. And execution is also having very good influence. And then agility. And thereafter, collaboration. Then respect on that performance integrity very closer to the benchmark. So then coming to the next slide where we could see that Amazon is again doing much, much better than the other uh, organizations which have been shown there, where Facebook, Samsung, Netflix, Google, Apple, Intel, okay, Windows, Oracle, Cisco. You can just see like, based on these particular nine parameters, how they have been positioned in their particular uh, organization. So the reference is shown there. Coming to this uh, history, so what is the design thinking, how it has been initiated, we have seen as an origin. And thereafter, step by step, you look at design science, which is being identified from the 1960s. And the way how you think about this particular design science, that has been integrated with the design science. And that is making you to identify the different paths, the different rules, the different uh, ways to make you to feel that you are in design thinking. So designly ways. So the approach along with the design Times it is becoming as a design thinking. You could see a design thinking is again missing. There are many varieties of designs which have been previously taken a place, like the participative design. Okay, and you could see about meta design, service design, user centered design. Now we are entering entered from 2010 onwards the human centered design. So here the history and evaluation how it is happened. The first wave has happened in 1960s to 1980s, okay, where the design has been considered as a science and it could be applicable for the wicked problems and could be seen as an innovation part. So you could see like how the brain has been compared against the computer and thereafter how the robot could be made with respect, uh, by considering the brain as a, the intelligence and thereafter the activities how it is getting executed and which has been considered as a the path for finding out the solution. Coming to the second wave, where intuition and design, then creative bridge, and thereafter, turning it as like a creative design, which not as a design, it is like a process. So there you could see the process and how the ease of design, and it has entered into like a, the path 
pathway, how it is being built to bridge the gap between problem and solution. And what should you be looking at as a design process? It could be like a process which could be guiding the designers to follow a systematic way. So here you could see the design thinking, what is now today we are discussing about has initiated in between 1960s. Initially, it was been mentioned as by Herbert Simon uh, of usage of this design science, which was shown in the previous slide also, where we used to say like a participatory design. Okay, in 1980s onwards, it has been given with a cognitive reflections to the design science and been mentioned it as a user-centered design. Okay, and when it is a class 1990s, it is entered into process, it has been integrated with the process method and being called as a meta design. Okay, and thereafter again, after 2000s, the mindset has been again added to this particular previous information, what has been included in a design and has been named it as a service design. And thereafter, by 2010, uh, Tim Brown from IDU, PEO, who is again made the design thinking to become like uh, very vital by uh, bring out one uh, organization by name IDEO and made the focus need to be on human centered design, uh, not in a, in a meta design or service design or a participative design or uh, uh, user centric design. Okay, so let us just see how it has been uh, come across in other uh, the way comparison between each uh, type of design. When you look at the participative design, User testing will be done and efficiency is going to be the metric and end user development is the, the uh, focus what they work out on that. But when you go for user centered design, user experience needs user at center of development, which was not there seen as in perspective design. User centered design is going to take the user as a center of uh, uh, your development. And then it has been again entered into meta design. In meta design, what is happening is a collaborative open source design systems and holistic community development, the focus on social sustainability. And thereafter again, it's been taken the shape into service design, where you could see multidisciplinary, they are the collaborative, they are multidisciplinary, and it could be applicable for the service systems, and it could take care about the shareholders engagement, holistic shareholders engagement, and focus on service sustainability. So there's a difference between meta design and service design, which could be looked at in a two, different places, one is taking about collaborative, other one is taking about multidisciplinary, one is taking about open source systems, other one is taking service systems, one is taking about holistic community development, other one is taking about holistic stakeholders engagement, and one is taking focus on social sustainability, other one is taking focus on service sustainability. So by taking these two, which is good and which is uh, predominant, it has, again, human-centered design has come into picture, stating about collaborative and multidisciplinary social systems, where holistic community development is definitely required and focus on empathy. This is the thing which is been added in human centered design and methods used it to gain direct understanding of audience and empower. Previously it was like improve, now it has come into empower. Okay, so with this, I could uh, summarize about what we have seen today uh, about uh, design thinking, how it is originated what made it to get originated as a process and thereafter again we have seen about uh, culture what makes this particular design thinking to be more innovative and makes as a, uh, the winner then third again we have seen about the history and then evolution okay and next class we'll see about what is the five stage design process